In a few weeks I will be running an ultra. That's what they call anything beyond marathon distance. In this case, 51 kilometers. So I took advantage of an early spring day to get in a marathon training. Literally, marathon. My plan was to take the train out to Potsdam and run back home to Berlin Moabit. Taking the scenic route, this would amount to more than 40 kilometers. The first part of the route felt like a 9 km long commercial from the Potsdam tourist office. My starting point was the Neue Palais, at the western end of Park Sans Souci. It was built under Friedrich II, also known as Frederick the Great, in the 17th century, and was mostly used to impress guests. Frederick's own residence is a bit down the road. We'll get to it. This is only the first out of five palaces on my route. The statues in the Parc Sans Souci were still in hibernation. The second palace I passed in the Parc Sans Souci was the Orangerie. This is a 19th century addition to the park, because growing oranges was fancy at the time, I guess? Probably it was about more than that, but the name stuck. Orangerie. And at the east side of the park, barely two kilometers into my run, the third palace, Schloss Sans Souci, lay waiting in the sunshine. This was where Frederick the Great lived, or at least it was his summer residence. Built in the 1740s, it was the start of the whole extravaganza that is Park Sans Souci. After leaving Sans Souci, I cut a straight line through the city to bring me to the next park with a minimum of street running. But even this random straight line did not hide Potsdam's beauty, like here at the Nauener Tor. After less than two kilometers of city running, I found myself in the second park of the run. On the shores of the first lake. Bringing with it the fourth palace, the Marmor Palais, standing watch over its little lake like a useless lighthouse. It was built under Friedrich Wilhelm II, Frederick the Great's successor. Can you tell they had different tastes? These palaces and parks, together with several more in the area, form a UNESCO World Heritage Site. I'd say they deserve that status. A bit later, with only 9 kilometers down, I crossed from Potsdam into Berlin, leaving the former GDR. The Glienicker Brücke is famous as a site of prisoner exchanges during the Cold War earning it the nickname Bridge of Spies. From there I would follow the lakes of the Havel River north for many kilometers. Sometimes following the waterside road, sometimes looking for more interesting trails in the cute little hills that border the lakes in this area. On my left here is the Pfaueninsel, another part of the UNESCO World Heritage Site that I can't seem to shut up about. After some 8 kilometers of peaceful trails, the scenery changed to urban again. The town of Wannsee is historically relevant as the place where the Nazis had a meeting to plan the logistics of genocide, but for a runner it has little to offer. Luckily, there were only a few kilometers of paved roads before I found myself on forest trails again. The Grunewald is a huge forest with some of Berlin's highest hills. That's not saying much, but it has just enough elevation changes to make for some exciting trail running. I was now on familiar terrain. In this forest, I did much of the training for my first marathon. And this part is still one of my favorite trails in Berlin. In fact, it is one of my favorite places in Berlin. The lakes of the Havel River never cease to provide a magnificent backdrop. Unfortunately, other people seem to think so too. And on such a nice early spring day, it gets a bit crowded at times. But away from the best views, there are plenty of quiet trails. 
In the middle of the Grunewald, there's an important place for runners. After this short pit stop, I continued northward. In the southern part of the Grunewald, I had sought out the most spectacular trails, at the cost of making some detours. In the northern half, I decided on a straight line approach. But even something that looks straight on the map can provide some good trail running. I left the Grunewald near the Olympic Stadium. From this side, the only visible part of it is the bell tower. No idea why a stadium needs a bell tower. Then I descended into the Morellenschlucht for the last piece of true trail running of the day. Or rather, trail walking. There is no way I'm running up such an incline after 35 kilometers of running. The mirrors are a memorial for the hundreds of prisoners that were executed here during the last year of World War II. Despite the distance I had already covered, my legs were still fresh enough to have fun on this lovely downhill trail. After that, it became more and more difficult to avoid streets. But a small piece of land squeezed between a railroad and the Spree River conveyed a nice path pointing towards home. At this point, the effort started to show itself. It showed more in my mind than in my legs. For example, I worried that I had not filled my water bag enough at my pit stop, and that I would run out of water. But objectively, that wouldn't be much of an issue, so close to home in cold spring weather. As I came closer to the city center, the path became well kept, and the surroundings, well, meh. And just when you think things cannot get any uglier, They become pretty again. This is the Schlosspark Charlottenburg. Schlosspark. That means I finally found the fifth palace of the run. And it also means that I was almost home. I run here so often I could probably find my way home blind. By the time I reached my front door, I had more than 44 kilometers on the counter. Great training for the Ultra. And a truly spectacular sightseeing tour.